Hey all Enlightenment Garden, coming to you from a very muggy afternoon here in middle of August. Today I wanted to show you and talk to you about some of the support plants that I have growing in my garden that I found to be very successful in our area and very beneficial. So the first one I want to mention is vetiver grass. So you can see here I've got a pretty mature clump of that growing now. I planted this clump last year just as a one gallon plant. So I've done a full video on vetiver and all of its benefits prior that I'll link. But highlights of those benefits are that it's fantastic for erosion control. It has a very deep root system that can go 10 feet into the ground. Um, excellent fodder, a chop and drop plants. So how I'm using this vetiver here is that you can see it's kind of at the front of this garden area. This garden area probably gets the most harsh sun. You know, it's westward facing, so really intense late afternoon sun. And I've got this position right in front of this Namwa banana. And it's done a really great job protecting this banana. Under here, this vetiver grass is giving the stalk shade. So it's preventing it from getting any direct sun. And it's also protecting the foliage. And with that shade element, everything is staying a bit cooler. Of course, the ground, the mulch. So one option is, you know, if you have a block wall that you want to block some of that radiant heat from hitting your plants, you can plant vetiver as a buffer in between those plants and the wall. They handle heat all day long and sun, so they'll take that location just fine. Or you can do something like I have where you have them as kind of a front hedge there to protect your plants. Uh, another plant that I utilize in my landscape is sweet potato vine. Once you plant one, uh, you will have it forever. It'll, it'll keep coming back. You know, just don't harvest it the first time you plant it, and every year it'll come back for you stronger. So as you can see, it's a vining plant, grows on the ground, so fantastic ground cover here, really sprawls out all over the place. And the benefit for this is that it's shading the ground. So it's helping retain moisture. It's helping keep that heat, that sunlight off the ground from cooking. So it keeps it cooler and more humid. Of course, it's most active in the summer when we need it. Uh, it tends to die back in the winter once we hit those freezing conditions. Another plant to point out here is this Mexican sunflower. This is Tithonia diversifolia. Well, it's not in bloom right now, it does bloom both in spring and fall. These large yellow sunflowers, um, wonderful attractant for beneficial insects, has very high nitrogen to the plant material, so another great chop and drop. Uh, grows vigorously in our climate, can actually get up to a very tall plant, you know, about 12 feet tall. So really, you can just allow it to grow as big as you want or, you know, keep it managed and chop it as it grows. Another one that grows mostly in the warm times, so it's going to put on most of its growth in summer. And then it starts slowing down in fall. Once we hit freezing temperatures, they will die back, but then they'll come back in spring. So a nice filler plant to plant around your fruit trees and edibles. So sweet almond bush is another one that I highly recommend here in zone 9b. Uh, it handles our sun and heat fantastic. It can grow up to 12 to 15 feet tall, so it can be you know, trimmed up to have more of a tree form if you're willing to do the work on pruning it, or you can let it kind of just grow its natural form as a bush, a very tall hedge. Beyond providing biomass and shade, it has very fragrant flowers that bloom almost year-round on it. Given that it has such a strong, nice fragrance, it does attract in a lot of your beneficial insects and pollinators. Hummingbirds love this. Bees, ladybugs, all sorts of beneficial insects. This again will grow 
the most during the warm season, during the summer, already down to zone eight and up. So while the foliage will die back a bit once we hit those freezing temperatures in winter, this plant will come back with a lot of growth in spring once we warm up from winter. Another plant to share with you is this Turk's Cap Hibiscus. A lot of these plants I discovered uh, through Pete Canaris' Green Dreams channel on YouTube. He gardens out in 9B, and so a lot of the plants that he recommends for food forests work pretty well in our climate here in Arizona, 9B. So this is one uh, that he recommends and grows, Turk's Cap Hibiscus. So this one too, is going to bring in those beneficial insects. Given that it is a hibiscus, the flowers are also edible, but unlike a typical hibiscus, this variety has very sweet flowers. So a higher sugar content on those, those flower buds when they mature. Unfortunately, I don't have any right now. The one thing I will say about this plant is you don't want to put this in direct full sun. This one really did struggle last month in July, really uh, burnt up its leaves and dropped most of them. You can see now that we're more into normal temperatures for our area, that it's starting to put on new growth here. But what's really nice about this plant is that it will bloom for you most of the, the year. So this would be nice filler for an area of your garden where you have some afternoon shade. It's gonna do really well there. Pineapple guava is another nice little shrub layer that you can add to your food forest as filler. You can see I've got that here in this mango area as well. Um, this too is going to attract in the beneficial insects and pollinators. Again, it's not in bloom right now, but this does bloom. An edible flower as well as fruit. Now this one is a more difficult one to get actual guavas out of. They're said to be self-fertile, but I've grown this in the past and really didn't get any fruit set. So I may try grafting, you know, other varieties or planting some additional varieties to help with that cross-pollination. But even outside of the fruit, it's another good one to bring in to help support that polyculture in your yard. Another one I definitely want to include in this list is the cranberry hibiscus. You can see one right in front. It's quite striking in that it produces both a red flower and red leaves. You can see the leaves are really pretty. Maple shaped to them. This plant in particular was planted this year as just a four inch starter plant in full sun and is thriving. They do need a lot of water uh, to grow well, but really do love the heat. So. These definitely hit the mark for a filler plant in a hot, sunny location. Uh, provides really nice color contrast, and the leaves are edible, so they actually do impart a cranberry taste. Definitely a, a tart type flavor to them. And I haven't actually seen this bloom yet, so I'm not sure when their normal blooming cycle is. Could just be because it got so hot it didn't put its energy into that, or the fact that it was just rooting out this year, it didn't put energy into flower production but seems to handle our soil as well, and I haven't really fertilized to date. The other one I want to mention is curry leaf. Now this is actually a small tree. When I initially researched this plant, it stated that these were very cold sensitive um, and that you couldn't grow these if you even had a light frost, but I found that to be not true whatsoever. These plants do phenomenally in the heat, as you can see. This is in full sun and it's taking it like a champ. Never have any burn to it. So fantastic plant to put in full sun and will grow well for you. Of course, the curry leaf is an edible. You can harvest these leaves and use them in making curries. That's traditionally how they're used in Indian cuisine. And as far as winters go, these have handled down to mid 20s in my yard with no issue. It's one plant that takes no damage in our winter. So this is perfectly fine for the Phoenix, Arizona area. The more you prune them, the more they grow. So 
variety of different options for the structure of this plant. You can treat it as a bush and keep it quite short, or you can, you know, have them as small trees in any location that you need a little bit more shade. So while that list is definitely not all inclusive of support plants that you can put in our area, they're ones that I'm growing that I'm very happy with. So hopefully that just gives you some more options as you're considering your garden and what you can do to help support your fruit trees and other plants, especially in summers like we just had. Um, I find the more dense you plant, the more protected and the better the trees perform. Hopefully we all get some rain this weekend. It's looking like a good chance of that. And we cool down a bit more. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.